All right, just about ready to go. Here we are back again, Techno Saturdays with me, John Selway. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hanging out with you guys again a little for a little while. And uh, I don't know, I'm playing with loops today. I think I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned last time I thought I'd get into a little bit of a 90s style groove similar to what Christian Smith and I used to do. I mean, we did, we had our various permutations and combinations of styles that we put together. Um, sometimes blisteringly hard, sometimes a little deeper, more musical. Uh, definitely, I'm leading, leaning towards the kind of thumping side today. Although I have a couple of, I usually get some kind of atmospheric elements going in there as well. So yeah, so that's what we're up to today. Uh, and um, I guess kind of leaning on samples a little bit. A lot of times what we did was uh, take little bits and pieces of drum loops and sounds that we found on old records, from disco records, from sort of random whatever it is. We had some interesting drums, you know, we always did some digging in that respect. So that's kind of what how I was thinking about the, the process today. So yeah, that's what we're up to. and. Um, Let's say hello to the chat. Pseudo Pulse from Lewiston, Maine. Welcome back. Glad you're psyched. Um, I don't know if Christian's going to stop by today, but uh, we may see him sooner or later, one of these days. And uh, hello, Caesar. Zoltan Laskovity. Did I get that right? That's an interesting one. That's a good name. And um, I will. Uh, also remind you guys, those of you who are new viewers here, this is, you know, 343 TV. Uh, we've got one of these streams going on every day covering different subjects from tips and tricks with Daltrick to Music Theory Thursdays with Max Wild. Abe Duque is doing Producer Mindset. I think uh, we've got a hybrid studio show. And, uh, you know, check in with us every day at the same time. There's usually something interesting going on. Uh, and, uh, of course, 343 TV is presented by 343 Labs, which is a music production school where I am also an instructor. Uh, I do a synthesis and sound design for producers course. We actually have one starting very soon. You might want to check out our website if you're interested, 343labs.com. Of course, we've got links here. Uh, also, if you haven't followed already, please do and do all that stuff that streamers like to ask their their followers follow us click like click the the notification all of that stuff um so you know what we're doing when we're when we're coming on and then so on and so forth so sultan from hungary sorry i know it's the, the accent right i don't have the accent so apologies <laughs> maybe someday i'll get it right um let's see we are we've been doing giveaways I think you'll probably see someone from 343 Labs, Labs probably Thomas, uh, pop in to the chat and uh, give you some info about the giveaway. Uh, we're going to be announcing a winner at the end of the show today, and I believe it has something to do with Ableton. So I think uh, there'll be more info in the chat about that. And uh, anyway, hey, Caesars from Peru. Nice. I've been there a couple times. I've played in Lima like years and years ago. It was great, especially the food. Wow. I mean, oh yeah, people, party, everything. I wish, I wish we could travel again. I mean, I've largely, I've uh, sort of retired from being a traveling DJ and musician. Um, I'm homebound. I'm a family man. I'm a teacher. At any rate, let's get into some content and see what I have going on here. So, I actually, it's funny. I was going to start out with less. I was just going to kind of start from scratch a little bit and go through the the sample process and the you know sort of the building this groove up uh but i got carried away and i just kept working on it so i added a whole bunch of stuff here so there's a lot to a lot of elements well not too many but we've got time to cover most of what's going on here and uh also i got another ooh, i got another camera set up here so we can if i happen to reach over to the keyboard or a controller i don't know if i'm going to do that today but it's there it's ready so you can see uh, what we've got going on and uh, 
Let's have a listen to some of the elements we've got going on here. So this is pretty much where I started. Um, I just found a couple of random drum loops from my live library. I mean, whether they are, you know, they were downloaded in a pack or whatever. These aren't like super special techno loops or anything. I just quickly went through some drum loops and then just picked a couple that I could, that I thought had sort of the tone and texture that I could work with uh, and then started I mean, actually, let's find this one in the library. Show in browser. There we go. Let's make sure you guys can hear the cue output. Right, so basically, acoustic, syncopated drum kit. And, you know, it's got kind of a, a, a tone to it, right? It's got, like, the room reverb and the ringing and the metallic kind of stuff going on and I like textures like that and definitely a lot of times um, making kind of drummy rolling techno we, we like to layering multiple drum loops together to create something heavier and more dense and more complex um, and a lot of times just using short loops of like one or even you know, two beats like half a bar or one beat even just to give it that that energy and texture you know, combined with whatever, you know, individual drums we're using with kick and so on. So let's, let's, this is, this was kind of the first thing I started with. I need my headphones a little louder. So yeah, just a little piece. And, you know, usually what I would do is, uh, you know, throw in, Throw in the drum loop, and you know, it, right away it's going to sound like this. And then, you know, I'll go down to say, shorten that up, make it more, more rolling, more repetitive, and maybe move the loop around. Now, I didn't want to particularly want a snare drum for this one. So I tried to isolate some of these in-between syncopated kicks. All right. Now let's go. I'm going to undo back to where I started because I've forgotten exactly where my loop was before. Yeah, it was pretty close. So it's Hi-hats with the rides going in the background and one of those little lighter kick drums. All right. Um, I kind of, I'm thinking like, you know, we used to use an Akai S950 and an Akai S3000 XL. Uh, S950 was like a lower bit rate and sounded, had, it was a little less shiny, a little more mids and kind of gritty to it and then okay the s3000 xl sampler was 16-bit and stereo it sounded a little nicer but those akai samplers had kind of a, a different tone to it and it was really great for you know like the density of like per percussion and stuff like that and one of the things i'll do when i'm you know I, i've got my computer here and i'm working at a high sample rate and it's you know it's all 32-bit or float or whatever however many you know wide dynamic range Sometimes you want to like limit your quality to get it to in a certain direction in terms of sound. So, you know, I'll do something like put this redux on here and make it 8-bit or 12-bit. And that just kind of, it lowers the, the, the bit depth and it kind of crunches it and compresses it a little bit. And it gives it more of kind of old school tone, like these old hardware samplers that we used to use. So that's sort of what I was thinking about putting this uh, device on there. And it's subtle. A little bit of EQ, just to kind of harsh up it, harsh it up a little bit. And then my next layer, All right? So this one, you know, this is another one just straight out of the library, and let's hear what that one sounded like. All right. So again, you know. I'm not if if I'm going through a library of loops or going through old records or MP3s even to like find some kind of sample idea I'm not going to just say oh I need a techno loop so I'm going to listen to techno 
I, you know, and this is more kind of a slower hip hop tempo, right? But I, I liked something about the, the kick and the sounds. I liked something about the character of the sound. So I'm kind of, I'm listening to the, the quality and the texture of, of it as, as much as I am, or even more than I am of the actual rhythm in there. Cause I know I can go in and make the rhythm what I want. So, and then I also know like speeding this one up. So I'm kind of giving my, my first sort of kick drum level in here. It's not the main kick. And again, it's got atmosphere from whatever processing was done to these drums when it was recorded. And then, okay, I'm EQing it, I'm saturating it. I put a low pass filter on there, which I will probably use later on in the arrangement. And still kind of thinking with the, within these limitations of what I was capable of doing and what instruments and effects I had available to me at the time that, you know, I made music like this before. So kind of keeping these sort of 90s gear and, limit, and sound quality limitations in mind to start with. <laughs> Just to get the flavor. You know, and like, why would I use an EQ3 instead of an EQ8 or a fancier EQ? And that's, you know, because back then I was using a Mackie mixer with just high, mid, and low, and that was it. That, so, there, we, you know, we weren't used to doing surgical precision all the time. And we weren't necessarily like always rolling off the low frequencies that we didn't need and doing, you know, all this like precision, you know, detail oriented nerding out on the effects and the EQ and the mixing that we, you know, we have this choice now, but I didn't think about it back then. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And I didn't know, think about why and whether I did it right. I just thought that sounds cool. So that's kind of where I'm at in, the, in my head right now. All right. Okay, so another thing kind of going in this stylistic direction is that we would look for loops and rhythmic loops that were kind of like a tonal or a lead element almost. Like in terms of techno, a lot sometimes your lead sort of element is not melodic. It's you know, it can be just percussion that's tonal or an effect that's tonal. And um I found this uh this loop here. Right, which is, you know, some kind of Indian percussion or something related to that. And, you know, those drums have a lot of tone. You can hear like a note and a harmony within those drums. And so taking that and making that like a main driving element on the top of what I just built with the other two simple, more generic kind of loops. So, and, and then I've got two versions of it, right? So like I started out with this. So, and this time instead of doing exactly a quarter or a two beats, I'm doing five sixteenths. So it's off time a little bit. Not polyrhythmic, but kind of, right? And of course this is super common thing to do with sequences in, in this style of music. You know, and how did I find that? I just started... I could have picked this one just as easily, but I like the, the one with the heavier lower hit that stands out. And then I wanted, to, you know, I was thinking like, you know, the track that Christian and I did, Weather, which is almost all drums and noise. And you know, we just took these really big, thick, heavy drum loops and just made them dirty and banging. And so I started thinking about, you know, how do I get a similar effect? And, you know, I've, of course, I've talked about this in past episodes, just about using distortion mainly, you know, and uh, in terms of tone and compression and sort of the dynamics of the sound, you know, just the distortion on a sound can do a lot. And so I've got two distortion effects here. I'm using overdrive just to kind of do a little bit. And that gives me something to play with. If I want to accentuate the highs or the lows going into that.
Let's put that together. And then another thing that's fun to do with distortion is to drive into it with resonance from a filter or an EQ. So, and, I, and this is something that I could play around with and automate and control with a knob, you know, what this guy's over here for. And or cut. And that's absolutely something I'm going to play with. Like, just like when I've got hardware hooked up and I'm twiddling knobs. It's the same thing with my effects. All right. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm ready to hear a kick drum. <laughs> now, let's see. Actually, I was, good, I was just going to use this typical, just, you know, old school 909 and then throw effects on it and make it pumped up. But I happen to have this uh, sample here. Hey, my Zoom's not working. What's going on? There we go. I think some of you might know who I mean when I say Smith kick. So yeah, this is, this is a kick drum that Christian and I have used uh, multiple times. And uh, let's hear how that sounds. I mean, I've done a little bit of processing to this, actually. Let's just start without that at first and just drop that kick straight on top of what I've got. Right. So I, I'm just I'm checking into the chat here. I, I noticed uh, my daughter is on and saying hello. Hi, Nara. She's on the couch right next to me. I'm in my living room with my family as I stream all this banging techno to you guys. <laughs> my wife is playing um, Legend of Zelda, and uh, my son's helping her out. So yeah, it's all it's it's family time as well as being techno time here today with me. So, um, and then. Let's see. Cosmic J giving us uh, millimeters and inches. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I did. I, my, I made my beat uh, five sixteenths of an inch long. Actually, of course, what I what I did was make the length of the sequence five sixteenth notes. So, uh, all right, back to the beat. I mean, this kick from already from experience is, you know, this is a pretty modern, big power kick. But I wanted it to go even more aggressive. So again, I'm using the, oh, some distortion. And now it's like brutal, it's crunchy, it's brighter. It's got some stereo, the sample is stereo. It's got some resonance, like some stereo low kind of rumbly, which is cool, but I'm tightening it up by using the bass in mon and using the utility preset, the bass mono preset. Yeah. And then, and then giving it a little shine. Cousin Lewis is in the house. I mean, I feel like just with the, the filtering into the distortion on that main distorted loop, plus the kick, and that could, I could just arrange that. Um, but let's, let's go a little further with it. So the next step is I took that same sample, but this time did some different effects with it. Now, this one's going a little beyond what I might have done back in the day because I didn't have this cool frequency shifter available to me, right? Which is... Okay, there's also a bunch of reverb on it. So anyway, the, the distortion sort of toned down a little bit. But then we're running it through this frequency shifter. And bringing out these higher ringy notes on top All 
right? So that's just driving me mad now. It's insane. Looks like we got a couple more people in the chat today. Nice. I'm seeing a lot of new names. This is good. And some familiar ones. Adonis Ducksworth, a student of mine. Nice to have you in the chat. Been a little while. Um, what are some sources of solid big techno kicks? What are you looking for in a solid kick? That's a good specific question. Um, it's yeah, it's like with techno, with this style of music, it's so much about like finding just the right kick for the style that you want to do. Um, I think. I mean, we've gone through this before, like just taking a more clean, unprocessed kick and processing it and fattening it up. Um, I don't know if I've I don't know if I've synthesized the kick in front of you guys. I mean, you know, that's another thing. But really, what I'm looking for is the right balance of like the transient that cuts through the mix but isn't too clicky, and you know, so. That's a hard one to achieve, actually. Um, and we, you know, we use things like compression and transient shaping and limiting to control that as well. You know, just the overall dynamics of it. And then beyond that, it it comes it comes down to the type of track that I'm trying to do. Sometimes I need a kick that's transparent to me, meaning that it doesn't take up the whole mix. It doesn't cover up the bass. It's more like tight and sharp and um, not as much. To overtone in it and sometimes i want like you know a distorted heavy thick tone that sounds almost just like a bass note right and that would be more on the hardcore kind of side um or like if you're taking a, an 808 boom and like saturating it to give it that big long thick decay that kind of thing um but yeah and i think for this style of music you know finding i want it to be heavy and powerful um, and have just the right kind of punch that cuts through and also have that kind of booming resonance that, you know, that ca cavernous, but maybe not, you know, you, we can do, we've done the whole thing with like adding reverb and stuff to a kick to get that. In this case, it, you know, it's, it's really got a filtered sound to it. And that's another thing to take into account is like the, the, the EQ and the filtering. Um, we should do an episode in the future where I just make kick drums. That might be good. <laughs> um, Cosmic J says heartbeats versus thunder. Yeah, kind of. Like, you know, if I... Well, actually, in this case, I'm using the high pass filter, but I'm rolling off below 30 but then boosting up I'm, I'm sorry 50 but then boosting up 50 it's giving it a little more rumble you can hear when I take that filter off it's less boomy I might have overdone it a little bit but now it's really filled out and resonant around 50 hertz but yeah if I just put a low pass and it's more heartbeat like now right All right, so this guy also, you know, it's kind of a higher frequency element now, and I also like the idea of giving it some atmosphere that I and just putting a reverb on it, just already, you know, in a break, for example, maybe some delay. That's cool because it's adding an extra rhythm to that. and also playing with the tone of this in real time. This one probably is gonna need like a compressor and an EQ on it to keep it under control to give me some more variation possibilities with the tone. Um, T4 Trouble, another new name, welcome. Is the key of the kick the key of your track? Uh, I'm not thinking about that at all. Actually, in this kind of situation where it's, it's all drums and bass and noise and rumble, I don't really care about key that much. I mean, I'm always attuned, attuned, haha, to get 
to hear like harmony and sounds. You know, it's like my training. Like you know, I started out playing uh, violin and uh, piano for years, and I come from kind of a musical classical musical family. So I always hear I I, I identify chords and harmony even in noise. It's just sort of my natural state. So you know, and then adding these kind of this higher frequency loop where I've shifted it up. It's I'm it's kind of in tune with uh with the, these guys are in tune with each other but i didn't think at all about key of bass here speaking of another thing that we used to like to do and still like to do with this style is have like a really deep heavy kind of rumbly sub in addition to what the kick is doing i mean there's enough bass in this kick that it, it, this could be it right but I also like the, the, the rumble that you get. And I didn't make this sort of randomly, but I didn't think about it too hard. I just kind of drew in some notes and a pattern. And I didn't pick it. Again, I didn't pick a key. I just, okay, am I in a good octave for a, a sub bass? You know, in between C0 and C1 on the right kind of sound is about the right octave to be in terms of MIDI notes. De again, depending on how the sound is designed. And simple and you know it's it's a filtered sawtooth wave doesn't matter you know this could be any synth the the wavetable sounds particularly like tight and solid so it's a good one for this and then that's what it's it's i'm just starting with a, it, this could have just easily have been a sine wave as well really simple but and then i'm adding some dirt and some overtones with the overdrive and then Kind of being where I was really careful was the filter and the resonance and the envelope, the amp envelope, to get to kind of feeling how I wanted to and fitting with the pattern that I like. I don't want it to be too short, too long. I want it to be rhythmic and I can adjust these curves. It's nice to have a precise envelope like that. Like, all right, see, that's maybe a little too long. There we go. If I make the attack time too fast, it's my click. I don't want the click. Good. And yeah, you want to check that out with your kick drum. So I think I kind of accidentally ended up in key but just be by trying it out. So yeah, I think I, I might have started up here. That sounds good too. And usually to get a pattern like that, I'll start on one note. Like somewhere. All right. And just put them in there, but you know, that already works. I'm just looking to fill in that frequency range in between the kicks in the right way. Cosmic J says a discordant kick can sound better in certain tracks, can give separation. That's true. And also, that's another rule to break with this kind of heavy, rumbly, rolling techno groove is having some low frequencies be deliberately out of phase so it gets like a shaking kind of wobbly kind of thing you know you don't want it to phase out and disappear but you know the rumble of the kick and the rumble of the bass going slightly in and out of phase creates a, a interesting tension that is really important to the groove of music like this so yeah you can see i just kind of started with a simple rhythm kind of thinking of where the kick drum is and then you know i might add a little syncopation to give it so it's not too straight That's gonna sound fine with a, whatever I had. I'm not sure which one I like better now. Let's try the other one. Similar, this one's heavier and more continuous. They both work. Another thing I'm avoiding with this, to sound kind of, to keep it on the 90s side of stylistic uh, choices is not to use sidechain compression on everything because we had none of that. <laughs> it was all just, 
on a mixing board and adjusting gain and, you know, overdriving and then maybe running the whole mix through one compressor. So that's another thing I, I started with. And I, I mean, I do this all the time anyway, but I've just got a, a bus compressor that on the whole time and I kind of forget about it. And I just mix through it. Uh, we used to use a Focusrite compounder. We'd run the, the just the, the, the uh, there wasn't even inserts on the mixer. It was just going straight out of the mixer into the Focusrite compounder into a DAP machine. Does anyone know if there's like a plugin that does what the compounder did? I mean, I'm sure I can set up something in live that does it, but it had this cool circuit where you could mix back the uncompressed bass into it in a certain way and it had a special filter on it. And it sounded really cool for, especially for this kind of music. There, I'm sure we can, we, I, I, I'll figure that one out. Um, let's see. All right, let's keep moving on through well, actually, no. Let's let's pause for a moment. Now we, we we're halfway through, and uh, again, I'm gonna let's let's go through and make sure I've said hello to everybody. We've said hello to Pseudo Pulse. Welcome back, Caesar Cesar C Zoltan. I'm not gonna try your last name again. I don't want to butcher it. Scott Vincent, glad to see you here. My daughter here, Nara, is over uh, on the couch, ignoring us ma mainly. Um, my cousin Lewis, really nice to see a family, another family member in the chat. Rockstar Jazz Cat, thumbs up. And uh, you guys who I've been talking to more recently, T4 Trouble, Cosmic K, J, or Cosmic J, and T uh, La Nouvelle, welcome. So, uh, as a reminder, 343 TV presented by 343 Labs, Music Production School. Uh, where I am an instructor. Again, we've got courses going on all the time online. We have the a, a physical school open in Berlin. That's warming up and going great. Uh, we still have a couple of options for classes in New York if you're interested in in-person. And uh, this week, starting Tuesday, I believe, uh, that's we have a synthesis and sound design for producers course that I teach so if some of you guys are have been kind of thinking maybe to uh, join a class and if you want to get some time with me um, it's not strictly about techno if you're doing other styles of music that's fine too but you know of course if you're sort of on my wavelength musically it'd be a great class to join if you're looking to uh, you know get deeper into making your own sounds for the styles of music that you're doing and uh, I think this one that we're starting this week is twice a week um, if I recall correctly, so something to consider. It's in the evenings. And uh, yeah, so also, of course, we've got streams up every day at one o'clock. I think we also uh, have uh, on Sundays, we do some, we do a feed, feedback session where you can submit your music to get some uh, critique and, you know, constructive criticism from uh, 343 Labs instructors. And uh, of course, I have my show on Saturdays, Abe Duque's on Fridays. Max Wilde is on Thursdays, um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'm getting mixed up in my head. Mondays is uh, Doll Trick, Tips and Tricks. So, uh, oh, Tuesdays, of course, how could I forget, is uh, Tetra Talks. That's, that's a good one. Um, let's see. And we also have our giveaway. I believe uh, there have been some posts in the chat with info about the giveaway. And uh, yet again, I'll let you know that we are announcing the winner at the end of the show today. Also, I want to remind some of you guys have already been throwing out uh, questions into the chat here, and I'm trying to uh, address as many of them as I can. Uh, but of course, uh, please continue to uh, ask questions and Give, a, give comments about uh, what you're thinking about here. Um, and let's get back to the music. All right. All right, I realize all my levels have gotten high, kind of hot here. And now I've, I've, my hi-hat's sort of buried in the background. Of course, that's sort of like right there, the kick and the open hat. That's like the bare minimum of 
additional drums and you know definitely going to go in and find some more elements to add to this um but i think i'm going to wait until the arrangement stage to do that because i really want these main elements these loops that everything is based around to be what i focus on uh, as i figure out how it changes over time in the arrangement and then i'll a as i go through that process i'm going to go oh here i need a ride simple oh here would be great if i had a clap or you know maybe here i have some noise effect or something like i'm going to figure that out in that context and you know those are all a lot of times those are transitional things that need to happen at a specific time and i'll know that better once i start laying that out um so i'm going to switch gears just slightly here and uh look at another sort of sample direction and um you know, so far what I've been building this out of are just sort of random generic library loops, like nothing particularly unique. You know, all of, we all have, if we're, we've probably a lot of us here have stuff like this. It came, you know, we downloaded it from Loopmasters or uh, Splice or we, uh, you know, it came with our DAW or whatever. Like we have all these loops lying around on our hard drives now. And, um, that's cool, and you can, of course, there's like a, a universe of sounds out there that you can draw on to, for sample-based production. But also, we, we have to acknowledge uh, sort of the more, you know, crate digging kind of finding sounds out there and creative sampling and uh, basically taking someone else's sound and doing something new with it is what I'm getting at. Um, now, of course, we're broadcasting on YouTube and we can't, you know, you know, we don't want to get a copyright strike here. So I've got a fairly obscure disco track here that I had a recording of. And I was thinking of some stuff that Christian and I did back then where we would, you know, we'd go through all our vinyl collections. And I, I've always like collected a lot of old school stuff in addition to like new music. And I really wanted to educate myself about the roots of techno and house and where it all came from. So I learned a lot about disco and other styles of, of uh, dance music, uh, electronic or not, right? And we used to, you know, take little bits and pieces, small samples, not like a whole melody, uh, not like a whole bass line, but little bits and pieces of these records that, and they have character, you know, they've got acoustic instruments. It's all mixed in a certain way. It's got the vinyl noise in it. All of that stuff goes a long way to give a unique character to a track. And we liked mining sort of, this kind of stuff and then making full on techno out of it. You know, this is not a new concept. Of course, everybody's been doing this for years, but uh, I still, you know, it's fun to go back and play around with this since uh, honestly, you know, after a couple of decades, like I tend not to do this kind of sampling as much. I tend to do more of my own recording if I want acoustics stuff or it's from a library already of a certain style that I need or whatever. Or I just make all the sounds with synthesizers, which is what I do most of the time. So, but that said, diving into you know an old disco track, and you can, and especially for a groove like this, you can give you some interesting musical or lead or atmospheric or rhythmic textures that give it a different sort of flair. So I, we've got this uh, this old disco track, and it starts out just with like a kick and a synth drum. So this was perfect to make like a one note repetitive hypnotic thing out of. Let's, let's take all the effects off for a second so we can hear. You know, I've got it, I've actually got it tuned down more than an octave. So. You know, I'll take a sample like this, I'll tune it, I'll play around with the warping, I'll adjust the timing. Of course, you know, in the 90s, I didn't have this technology where I could just chip perfect the timing of a loop like like that right just moving the, the transients around or change it into something else you know so you had to like manually tune your loops and sometimes they weren't perfect and that was also sort of part of the style so sometimes it's cool to just like not make the loops perfect and have them be a little loose and have the kick and from the old disco tune flaming a little bit with your big uh power techno kick or something like that it gives it a flavor and it it's the little details of that go a long way to create this groove that we're looking for that's hard but also not too uh mechanical right i that's another reason i like to use these kinds of sources is it doesn't have a mechanical feeling to it it's humans playing this
and EQing and compressing it. I mean, I didn't have a compressor this good back then, but this one, the kick drum is too sharp, so I'm like bringing down the transient, but with a fast attack on the on the compressor, and it doing the low bitrate thing again, which is adding noise to it, and then just a echo. All right, so that's one. That's one loop I got out of there. Um, I have another one where I'm using just simple volume clip automation and cutting out bits to chop, right? You know, there's other fancier ways to chop a sample. This is the fastest in live when, when you're working with a loop. And uh, so this one's just... Uh, there's this a part where there's a little there's a voice in there and there's like a, a, a funky bass in there and then there's this horn blast done it right and I wanted to bring that out but also keep a little bit of the, the syncopation of the other stuff actually let's hear what that sounds like without the envelope you know playing that whole thing like that makes it sound like okay disco loop right um but then Make sure I get my envelope back. There we go. Right, so we have a little bit of that flavor, but I, you know, I want that, that the chord stab to, to be isolated, and then I have those little bits and pieces that are uh, filling in the beat a little bit. And I also, you know, I was sh I shifted the, to get the timing sort of how I wanted it, I went in here and moved the warp markers around. Like, without, th uh, this, this is how the timing used to be. Which also works. And just something about just moving that transient over sort of made it sound slightly smoother. Subtle, but... This one, I think I also moved a little bit. Might even make a, a variation of that. Let's do one with that doesn't have the bigger stab in it. That's good. I can switch between those in the arrangement. It's a little, I feel like I got two tracks now. So. That's actually another part of the workflow that Christian and I had was we'd start by we'd making a track in a particular style and then um, go in one direction. And then once we were done, we'd take the same starting point and go in another direction. So, you know, I started with the heavier, more distorted driving version, you know, and then I cut those out. And now I'm looking at this disco loop, this disco track to give me a different flavor. And it may or may not fit with... Uh, everything that we started with. Um, yeah, it's kind of, especially with this uh, synth sort of droning along. That's better. Yeah, I think it wants to be like a bouncier groove with this one. I like that more stripped down. What's this one? 
Okay, yeah, here we go. This is sort of going back down again. So I found there's a section of the disco tune that has just some long strings and it's kind of more moody and harmonic. Um, so I could kind of play around with the filter on this one. So yeah, I like this. I've got like two track directions. You know, I mean, look at A side and a B side, so to speak. If we're cutting 12 inches of, final 12 inches of this, it doesn't happen so often uh, nowadays. For us, anyway. Um, let's check back in with the chats. And uh, T4 Trouble asks... Kick and sub, they need to be at certain frequencies to sit well. Yeah, and you know, since I'm deliberately avoiding uh, doing sidechain compression to make the bass get out of the way of the kick and so on, you need to be a little more careful about the frequencies of each. And if you know, if I, uh, you know, there are different ways of handling it. Basically, you know, let's listen actually to all right the the rumbly. So let's put an EQ on this so I can see what's going on. So this one's peaking. The lowest note is peaking around 46, 45 hertz. All right. And then with the kick, it's 50. So they're just about right on top of each other. So I guess what I'm... You know, I mentioned this before, like sometimes with this kind of style, you want it not to be perfectly mixed and everything ducking out of the way and perfectly EQ'd. Like you want the battle, you want the tension and the rumbliness and the noisiness of the bass kind of being all over the place like that. Um, um, but that said, you know, still listen, use your ears and or, or if you can't hear it super accurately because your speakers don't re represent the super low frequencies all that accurately in your room or whatever. Um, you know, you can look and see like where one's battling with the other one. You know, maybe if I want the sub to come out more, you know, I can take some low frequencies away from the kick. So the kick sounds more punchy and All right, so now I'm like I'm taking away some of that rumble. And then I could have this one. like taking away some of the upper bass, lower mids to make it sound darker. So you're kind of spreading them out. Um, and even before you get to EQ, that's another reason why you might just play around with the notes. So like, you know, the, the mainly it's this F sharp that's close to where the kick drum is. So what if I tune it all up a little bit? And then those lower notes are going to stand out more compared to the kick because they're higher frequency. Or maybe I tune the kick drum up a little bit. That's good too. So you just have to try it. And you'll find like small changes like that. It, it's not just about mixing it. It's also about the groove that you feel you know, the whole looping, driving, techno, hard groove that we're getting out of this will change depending on how you tune those samples and how you EQ them. So sometimes you, the groove that you want, that you feel making you move may be technically wrong, but it's not wrong because it's working. <laughs> Who else have we got in here? Max is back. Max, when are we going to do a collaboration? When are you going to record some saxophone for me? Seriously. Um, I'm going to have to send you some stems or something because you're far away. 
Robot, Dar Robot Dharma's back. Hello again. John H. Kingston III from Rockaway Park, New York. Welcome. Ray Strobel from Berlin. Glad you could join us. And Cosmic J has had some good comments and questions today. You gotta say 45 hertz and 50 hertz are quite different pitches. 10% is quite a difference pitch-wise. That's true. And sometimes you might want to just do tiny detuning up or down to get it where you want it. it I, I just did it quickly, obviously, for a semitone or two. It is a lot. Pandemic. Hi. Appropriate handle you got there for these times. So that's right. We've got, or we, we've got Berlin in the house. We've got various locations around the world in the house today. And I'm glad to have you all here. So we're just, we're getting close to wrapping up time. Um, I have one more element that I was playing around with, and that was kind of further going in a different direction from where I started. And that was to do kind of a more synth, synthy sounding melod bass with a definable melody. I mean, okay, this one does have a melody, but it's so low and rumbly, like you can barely hear what clearly what that melody is. That's just how our actually how our brains work. Like we don't, the lower the frequency is, the harder it is for us to discern clear pitch. Uh, but anyway, having sort of going in a slightly different stylistic direction with something like that, which is another like definitely like a Smith and Selway style bass, bass line, you know, along the lines of like a mini Moog or whatever. This time I'm using the really awesome Uhi Repro One, you know, the Pro One version with the extra stuff. This is a great synth. This and the and the five, highly recommended. And. Uh, still need to work on this a little bit and I'm deliberately not making this like super heavy I want it to be kind of more above the kick and not to let the kick rumble be the main sub bass and then this one's just kind of playing on top of it probably want to saturate it push it a little bit All right, so the idea was to kind of go, keep going in this more musical direction with the disco samples. Again, simple. I mean, I've made it sound like this so many times, and it just always works. And, um, you know, I could take this, get a little more detailed with it in terms of synthesis, but a lot of times just that pure, simple, subtractive, sawtooth kind of sound just fits right in when you need, when you need it. So, uh, Berlin is known for... Etch now. Oh, I if you just don't don't make fun of his typos. <laughs> uh, Swansea, nice. Yeah, I can't read that. Neukölln, Friedrichshain, kann ich mir nicht leisten. I don't really speak German, so sorry, sorry for that. Um, ich kann nicht Deutsch sprechen. Is that right? Nope, it's not right. My wife knows better. Sorry, that was embarrassing. Even though I like lived in Berlin for part time for a little while, I did like the typical techno thing, and had had a place there, and would travel from there to to my gigs in Europe. So anyway, um, let's see. I've been, I as always, I've enjoyed my time hanging out with you guys, and I'm really. Glad to, we, we've got a pretty good number of, of new names here in the chat. So I hope you will, you, you've enjoyed the experience and that you will come back again for uh, upcoming episodes. Um, I'm going to finally change my scene here. Let's go back to the, to the big picture and the lower third. 
And uh, you can see also behind me better now the, the video game action going on. What do you think? You wanna, do you want to be a Twitch streamer now? And No, she's, she's not having it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pandemic says it means Friedrich Sign is too expensive for a, a poor dude. Aw. Berlin is not as... It's still better than New York in terms of cost of living, but it's not what it used to be. I know that. And uh, so anyway, yeah, we're wrapping it up. We've got to announce our, our, our winner of a $200 Ableton voucher, Kaz Taylor. Congratulations. That is a fantastic prize. Good value uh, for you to, to pick up some able towards Ableton products. So again, congratulations and thanks for entering. Thanks for being a part of the 343 Labs community, you know, and, and that's one of the big reasons why we're doing this, right? We're reaching out globally, sort of sharing what we, we're doing with you guys and, of course, raising, you know, raising the attention level on uh, the, our school and the classes that we provide and the workshops that we do. And uh, I, let's see, I think, think we're still we're not quite done yet i might have like jumped the gun on my closing but um i'll just ask you before we totally sign off if anyone has any last questions and uh, i'll keep an eye on the chat while i continue to give you my spiel um so this is just you know getting started with this track and um you know my kind of idea for for continuing this is next time taking this and translating it into the arrangement view. So um, starting to, you know, cause I started talking about that, like, you know, what I was gonna do and how I was thinking about adding elements and uh, as I progressed through the arrangement. And uh, you know, and I've done episodes like this before. And so it'll be along similar lines uh, of what I've done in the past, but you know, every time it's a little bit different and you know, especially I haven't, honestly, I haven't, made a track in this style in quite some time. So, um, you know, I can go back and do it the way I used to do it, or maybe we can try to look at some other ways to, to arrange it and kind of spice it up. Uh, and also, you know, I started with this kind of 90s style in mind, but it's also 2020, and I have a lot of other possibilities at my disposal. So, you know, maybe I can also think about how to bring it up to date and like, you know, make it sound fresh at the same time that it's evoking something from 20 something years ago. So, um, so that's what's happening next time and, uh, next Saturday. And then the Saturday following is going to be, uh, it's going to be Saturday techno friends. And the idea for that episode is to always have a guest and we'll have a discussion and we'll, we'll, you know, like a casual, uh, interview, uh, hopefully with people like Christian, uh, and others that I've worked with in the past that I know well, and but also maybe reaching out to some some new artists, younger artists, and getting to know them. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that one. And uh, fingers crossed that Christian's available for our inaugural Techno Friends episode because, you know, I'm kind of thinking about our style with this, and you know, he and I can kind of go over this and work together to 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 decide how to finish it. Or maybe we'll start a new thing. We'll see. I mean, there's only so much you can do in an hour. Uh, at any rate, thanks, everyone. Congratulations again to our winner. Uh, Roy Strobel, Cosmic J, La Nouvelle, uh, Pandemic, Caesar C, everyone who has been in the house today, thanks again. And uh, I'm going to sign off, and I'll see you next time. Adios.